Okay, so super excited today. I am getting the spinning wheels out as the weather changes. It is nice to have some wool to work with. And I, I got some wool from a couple different sources, which is kind of exciting. I always love to open up wool boxes. So going to go into the post office and see what they have for me. And then eventually, let's see if I can show you. Eventually, I want to go up into the little crafting nook up there and show you the wheels and the wool and everything like that. So I'll show you what we got. Here's our little post office. I always get funny looks when I film in here. So I'm going to check it really quick in case there's anything little because I know that I have at least one big box. It looks like it is happy birthday to me. I'm not actually sure what's in some of these boxes. A lot of times we have things sent to us by people that want us to try stuff and talk about it on the channel. But I know that some of it I ordered and it is fiber and I'm super excited about that. And mm, yeah, this has been washed. You know how I can tell because it doesn't have dust in it. Alpacas like to dust bath a lot. Oh, this, this one is gorgeous. I wish they had labeled it with the name of the creature I bought it from. This is wow. This is wow. That's gonna be so much fun to spin. Mm, it smells so good. Yes, you want a good spinning wheel, but more than a good spinning wheel, you want really good fiber. Okay, so while we were traveling, I didn't do a lot of spinning. I did some at the beginning and I took my spinning wheel. I took my hopper. The hopper is the one that I absolutely adore. It has a higher foot position and your feet are up like this rather than down like this. They're up like this, but it is not a fine yarn machine. It is a production machine for art yarn. Now, if you want to do production fine spinning, then any of the other spinning wheels are really good. And they have now invented what's called the golden whirl, which means that the ratios on it go all the way up to one to 60. Generally, your, um, your highest ratio is one to 26, maybe one to 30. Um, and then you're spinning, you know, lace weight, maybe sock weight yarn. Um, but Spinolution is actually owned and created by an engineer. He loves math. He, uh, Mike is amazing. He invented this particular spinning wheel for his wife and then just really got into it. And so that's how the business started was he's an engineer and he likes to tinker with things. And so he can't leave well enough alone. And Mike talked about how he was trying to get a new flyer uh, whirl put together. And so it was really exciting to see that in the making when we were there. And if you want to see that video, I'll put it in the link. He also had a, his, his, uh, what's it called? His factory was actually in a tiny house, which I thought was super cool. All right. This one is really pretty too. My goodness. I love shopping on Etsy. This one is gorgeous. And I know the hat that I'm going to make out of it. It's going to be a big kind of a, I don't even know what to call it. Not really a bonnet, but a very romantic looking wide brim felted hat. Anyway, so I have a Mach 3 and a Hopper. I love them both for very different reasons. The Mach 3 is very fast, very, very fast. It's also very heavy. It's very efficient. The Hopper, I just love how it feels to spin on it. But with the new Golden Whirl that all the Spinolution, all the new Spinolution wheels come with golden wheel except the hopper. You can do lace weight things like cotton, thread weight, cotton is thread weight um, with these new golden whirls. So that's pretty exciting. I don't have one of those. Um, you can get the, the switch out of the flyer and everything, but it's pretty expensive to do that. And so I will probably wait for a while to do that. But if I ever feel like I want to upgrade, Part of it is I just don't have space. I'm in a tiny house for crying out loud. There's a limit to how much crafting stuff I can have. Guys, 
so welcome to my studio this is I sleep up here too but it is my crafting space so I'm gonna see if I can like twirl it around a little bit and let you see it I have not finished this one wall I just haven't got to it and I still wanted to show you because it's super cool so that's the sleeping portion and then you can see right there is my hopper and all of the uh, lazy cakes that go with the spinning wheel. Here's a box of fabric. There are all my pattern books. Uh, two more boxes of fabric. They're actually just cardboard boxes or milk crates that I covered in fabric with um, uh, hot glue. And then, let's see if I can get out of the way. So there is the Pat Green um, uh, drum carter, two looms, those ones are the girls, and a basket full of yarn that's already been finished. Some of these are commercial. This one was sent by a friend. This one I purchased for a special project. Um, this is all the fiber I had left, so I'm really excited to show you what I got from the spinning box. Um, Nitty Naughty. Uh, some of my uh, supported and drop spindles. My knitting bowl that allows me to hold my yarn nicely. And then this is the bowl that goes with my supported spindle. And then this is the Nitty Naughty winding mechanism for making either a small skein of yarn or a large skein of yarn. It fits onto <coughs> any of the larger spinning wheels. Two different um, uh, Lazy Kates. This one goes to the Mach 3. The other one goes to the Hopper. It opens up like this. If you can see that. There we go. So it opens up like this. And then you put your rods in the top here and the rods stick up. I do not keep the rods in if they don't have a skein on top of them. So that's why there's no rods in it. And then it actually snaps onto the back of the spinning wheel as well so that you can pull from it when you are applying. So pretty neat. Fun little machines. That's what that little knob is there for is to latch it in once you have it up in, in, inside the handle. Um, I also have the bigger, um, I also have the bigger flyer and everything that goes with this, but the eight ounce, I don't do a lot of really big chunky yarn and it usually it's traditional. And so I don't really need more than eight ounces. That makes a lot of yarn. So this is my project space and I love it. Um, I would like to show you, but the window being there means that you don't have very good light. You can see that I have, like if I sit all the way up, I almost touch the ceiling. So this is the perfect height for me. The girl's loft is a little bit shorter than that. Oh, so pretty. Um, so the theme this month on the spinning box is fairy tale. And I like this. So when it says see you next month, mermaid and mythical creations, it has a little sticker there that tells you what next month is about. And this one has butterfly paper. Super cute. It says combine each story and make it your own fairy tale because she has a pumpkin for a coach. All right. I think I'm going to try and go down a little bit. Erg down okay so it comes with this nice little newsletter with a safety uh, awareness thing about the dyes because they can be nasty how to make apple roses is that cute not poisonous all right for the good stuff though everybody knows you come to the fiber opening in order to look at the fiber now, the reason I like these boxes is that you get a little bit of everything. You get to try out different shops and you get to find out if you want to buy more from that shop. I have to admit for me, I do like the larger samples. Hummingbird fibers and crafts, that is very pretty. It doesn't scream at me, hello, buy more of me. The, the packaging is cute because the wool itself matches with Alice's hair and apron and dress. So that's super cute. 
Um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the super teeny tinies. I know that, I know that, um, wool comp compacts down a lot. This one looks like silk. Yeah, that looks like silk. Um, okay, merino and bamboo. Interesting. It's been a long time since I tried to spin bamboo. So you can see that's in a braid. I would have to take that apart in order to show you better, but it's cute. I'm not a big pink purple fan. I love neutral colors. Um, I like colors that will wear well for a long time. And so I have a tendency to go with brown. I really love brown. Yeah, I'm not a bright color person, unfortunately. This is Suffolk and Alpaca. Hand carded bats. I think the, the craftsmanship itself, the wool itself, looks really pretty. Um, this one has just a little bit of vegetable matter in it. Not a lot, but a little bit. And um, here's some that is raw, raw locks, plus some that is carded, which I think is a great idea. Sheep. So this is like a breed box to allow you to try the wool of a certain kind of sheep. This one, merino and tensile, which is a tree fi fiber, if I remember correctly. Mm, I like this. I have to admit, since getting the scrap box from Natalie from Namaste Farm, I am, I'm definitely more of a lock girl now than a roving girl. I mean, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I love the tips. I love the, the melting color. I like that. That's really pretty. Um, and they also sent a little bit of roving so that you could kind of see what, what both would do, which I think is really smart. So I like that one. This one is definitely more to my liking. It's called the Gypsy Owl, and it's a Corydale blend medium wool. And it came with these little uh, dealy bobbers that you could put onto your yarn. I like that. The Evil Queen. I like that one. Here is some Angelina, which is your sparkly stuff. You don't want to put too much in or it can get scratchy. So that's kind of fun. Camage fibers. And this is, I don't know what this is. Dare I ask. It looks creepy, whatever it is. Yuck. What is that? I wonder, I wonder if it's supposed to be like a stress reliever ball. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, it feels kind of gross. Yeah, it's not for eating, but I think it's a stress ball. That's kind of cool. Very creepy, very creepy. It looks like a, okay, so this one looks like it's gonna be my favorite. And the, the producer of the spinning box is always my favorite. She always is. Then that's Kamaj Fiber. She always does an amazing job with her blend. And this one is no exception. It does look like a fairy princess. My goodness, isn't that beautiful? It's a rainbow fire star. I don't know, can you see the, I might have to take it out so you can see it. It's always so pretty, whatever. Can you see it? So pretty. And she always gives you plenty. So if you wanted to make a whole skein of yarn out of all the bits and bobs and you wanted to bring them all together, you totally could. I don't know what this is. Salted pumpkin seeds, my favorite. Okay. And then you also get a little notepad, which I have a tendency to use mine a lot. I think they're cuter than most post-it notes, so I like to use them. And then a little dryer ball, I guess. So what I really like to do is wait until I have a few boxes that are backed up instead of spinning it all at once from the same box because I have a tendency to be more choosy about what colors I like to put together, what fibers I wanna to put together. And this will be no exception. Um, I feel like I really love this one the one that actually came from Kamaj fiber itself. 
Um, I really like this one from the Gypsy Owl. I liked how they put the colors together. I liked the amount. So I find these fun to pull um, for special projects to add just a little bit of extra color, but I don't like to take everything straight from the box and just spin it up. I feel like I don't get enough yarn out of it to justify the cost. The cost on these I think was 50 or maybe $55, which is a lot of money. And um, I feel like I get a lot more bang for my buck by getting a scrap box from Natalie from Namaste Farms. I, because she also sends roving and ribbon and her colors are to die for. A lot of her locks make it so that you really need to put them into an art yarn rather than a traditional yarn. Much easier to make a, tra a tra much easier to make a traditional yarn from roving or a bat than it is from locks. However, um, if you're a new spinner, I think that locks are a lot of fun to play with. Um, I do I do like the spinning box, but it costs like twenty dollars more than a scrap box. Um, and they are fun. They are super fun. If you have a little bit of crafting money to burn go for it. I do just really like uh, Namaste Farm quality. They're very consistent. I do like them. And if I was to say that I was always going to be buying from one person, it would be from Kamaj Fibers. I really love them and she is the curator of these boxes. And hers, her, her sample is always fantastic. And so if I could always buy from her, I would, um, or get more that it is the same quality um, as what she creates, I would. And she, she has a website <clears throat> she has a YouTube channel, uh, the Kamash Fibers, and um, it might be something else. It might be like Blue Mountain. I need to go look it up. But I will put it in the link below. I will also put the link to Natalie from Namaste Farms and the link to my Etsy store in case you are looking for some kind of handmade item. I don't make anything big anymore like the sweaters. I only make hats and gloves and scarves and that kind of thing. Socks. Um, if you're looking for advice on a spinning wheel, I have used I have used quite a few spinning wheels and I've owned quite a few spinning wheels. And you see now that I'm just down to spin illusion because I make production. I need it. I need to, it to be fast. I need it to be smooth. I need it to be easy on my body. They're ergonomically correct. And there's always some cool new toy coming out with them that makes it really fun. They're always improving. They're not stuck in limbo as far as um, what they can do. So I think they're incredible. So go check those out and we'll talk to you later.